Well, so the, the link to the poll is going to stay in the chat. Uh, we'll uh, revisit these results here at the end and see kind of where it landed. So feel free to click through, provide more answers. I want to go ahead and get us started with the meat of our agenda today. Um, really, really cool opportunity we've got today uh, to have a special guest from London, uh, Sarah Bartlett with us. Um, I've gotten to know Sarah for uh, about the past four or five years as, through the Tableau community, at Tableau conferences. Um, we've really gotten to know her well. She's, she's become a good friend um, um, and now a coworker, actually. We actually both are with Slalom now. Um, but I've had the opportunity to work with Sarah. <clears throat> Sarah is a newly crowned Tableau Zen Master this year, so congrats to her on that. Um, that, that amazing recognition. Um, she also is the founder of um, a Tableau community project called Iron Quest, which helps prepare uh, folks in the community to participate in Tableau's uh, insane Iron Viz competition uh, through a series of monthly challenges. Um, Sarah herself is an Iron Viz participant, having won one of the feeder competitions uh, for Iron Viz Europe in 2018, I believe. Um, and, you know, she's, she's been a very, very central figure in the Tableau community for four or five years. She's, she's presented to multiple user groups across the globe. So very, very lucky. Um, if there's one positive of COVID forcing us virtual, it's we can bring in speakers we wouldn't normally be able to get. So very, very happy to have Sarah join us today to tell you a little bit more about her journey and how she has used Tableau both to advance her career as well as to, to meet her personal goals for growth. Um, the Tableau community is a, is a massive part of that and you'll hear her tell that story. So, so with that, Sarah, I'd like to turn it over to you. Uh, welcome. Thank you for the amazing intro, Jeremy. Uh, thank you for inviting me here as well. It's super exciting to speak to the Charlotte Todd. Um, so today I'm going to be talking to you about skills for success and sharing some tips to help you become a better analyst using Tableau. So um, just I think, I think Jeremy's covered this all already, but um, so my name is Sarah Bartlett. I'm a consultant at Slalom in London, the same company that uh, Jeremy works for. Um, Tableau Zen Master since I think February this year, so it hasn't quite sunk in yet, <laughs> that's actually real. Um, I'm a Tableau Social Ambassador as well, and I've been that for about two years now, and I'm also the co-leader of the London Tableau User Group. Um, if you want to reach out to me, you can follow me on Twitter, at Sarah Loves Data, or um, my website, sarahlovesdata.co.uk. I will share those links at the end, so um, don't worry if you haven't got them or anything. So just a little bit about me before I begin. So I've been working in analytics for about 12 years now. Um, I studied economics and business at university um, and then started working in more analytical roles after that. I did work as an economist for a year and I decided that wasn't for me. Um, so then I went into industry. Um, I've been using Tableau for around six years. Um, like the reason I started using Tableau was because uh, the company I was working for brought in a new head of BI and they said that like Tableau was the way to go and I got sent on a two day training course. I think to date that's the only official Tableau training that I've had um, and the rest of it has purely been self taught. I've been working for three years in consulting, uh, so about two years with um, Slalom and prior to that I worked at Capgemini. Um, so my main role is just working with clients to help them overcome uh, any issues they're having with Tableau, to help build dashboards, to help look at their like data strategy and that kind of thing. Um, I'm fully like Tableau certified on the desktop side. So I got my associate um, certificate in 2018 and my professional in 2019. And as Jeremy mentioned, I founded IronQuest, which is a community project in 2019 as well. You may know me from some of my Tableau public visits. So here's a selection of, of some of them. I have around 150 on Tableau public now, um, and they're on a very diverse set of topics. Um, a lot of them were from a project called Makeover Monday, which is a weekly project, which I'll talk more about later, but every week has a different topic. Uh, so you'll see I've covered a diverse range of different things. Um, I've also covered some like personal like passion projects, so like Stormzy Viz, is a, he's a rapper that I, I like from the UK. And then the Viz on the right, the uh, Explore European Cities one, is the, the Viz that got me into the Iron Viz final in Europe in 2018. So 
as we as I was starting out, I, I fell in love with Excel, and a lot of my work prior to Tableau looked like this. Um, this isn't actually a dashboard of mine, but it was very similar to things I was producing at the time. Um, I lived and breathed tab, uh, Excel. It was 100% of my day was spent in Excel, um, and I was producing all these reports, and I thought they were great. And then. Like I said before, I got sent on a two day training course with Tableau. At the time, I didn't know what Tableau was, um, but I fell in love with it uh, immediately. So it, I, I was completely converted after attending that course. But then when I went back to work and tried to use it, I found that I actually really struggled and I couldn't really understand how to apply Tableau to what I was doing. Um, I've been trained on the Superstore sales data set and it was very different to the data that I was using at the time. Um, I worked in a facilities management company and I was looking at call center data, so like the kind of jobs that people were logging for requests to um, I know clean coffee off the carpet or fix a light bulb um, and it wasn't it was more counting jobs rather than looking at sales and revenue and um, so I quickly gave up and I thought you know what I don't really want to use Tableau anymore no one was pushing me to use it I was the only person in my team that had it so there was no kind of pressure for me to use it there either and um, so I didn't use it for about six months and then I thought you know what I actually should really revisit, revisit Tableau it's, it's it was I enjoyed it in the training I think it can really help me and um, so a lot of my time then was invested in upskilling myself. Um, I spent a lot of time in the evenings doing like Makeover Monday challenges or just reading blog posts and, and learning new Tableau techniques. And I credit that to getting me to where I am today. I'm gonna to share some of those tips with you uh, later, but just so you can see, um, I think this biz was my first biz that I published in around 2016, I'd like to say. Um, it was a Makeover Monday biz. It was, it was week nine of Makeover Monday, so the first the first year they ran it it was the ninth week um and i it took me a lot of courage to kind of to, to i had to pluck up a lot of courage to actually publish this on tableau public and then share it via twitter i was convinced that the community would um say to me like oh this is terrible or um i don't know all, all these thoughts were going through my head um but I, I, it may be a really simple biz but i i was really proud of it at the time and that gave me more confidence and so in the following week i published this biz and in my opinion, this is worse than the biz from week one. Uh, but at the time, I thought this biz was really, really good. Um, I thought I was being really creative in the chart types I was using. Um, but I look at this now and it just makes me cringe because it's pretty terrible. Um, and then just if we fast forward to, to now, um, this is the most recent biz that I have published. Again, it's a makeover Monday. Um, but I mean, I've learned a lot of skills along the way. Um, so half this is actually created in a tool called Figma uh, and then the chart is actually created in Tableau, but I wouldn't have been able to know where to begin if you'd asked me to do this kind of visualization uh, when I first started out. So today I wanna to talk around um, some tips that are gonna help you get there. Um, but before, before I go any further, I'd just like to say why I think Tableau is a good tool and, and, and why I've kind of stuck with it all this time. Um, now, as we all know, data skills are in demand. Um, if you just look on LinkedIn and um, look for jobs that looking for skills in Tableau, there's quite a few of those. Um, it's a marketing leading software. Uh, if you look at the Gartner Magic Quadrant, uh, Tableau is always a leader in that and has been, I think, for over five years now. Um, Tableau can be used in any industry. It doesn't matter what kind of data you're working with. It's like you heard, Tableau could handle it. Uh, it's very easy to learn. Um, and I mean, yeah, I guess, it, it is what you make of it really but it's pretty easy to learn it's got an easy interface you don't really need to know any code um, it has a free open source version so that's tableau public um, and also it's got this amazing community around it and I, th I think if it wasn't for the community i probably wouldn't have stuck with tableau but the community which i'll talk about later is just so fantastic and everyone really wants to help you succeed so in terms of the tips, I'll begin with this. So this is the data visualization skills triangle. And I, I found this online uh, from a guy called Will Chase. He's actually uh, quite popular in the R community, uh, but this still applies to, to Tableau. And I think to, to kind of master data visualization, you kind of need to have skills in data, tools, and design, and they all kind of complement each other. And if you didn't, if you had no skills in one of these areas, you will struggle. And if I go into those in a little bit more detail, if we think of data, to be good at data visualization, you need to have a level of data skill, uh, whether that be um, skills in data collection, data wrangling, handling different data structures, databases, um, a knowledge of basic statistics, and also the ability to actually understand what you need to use 
do with the data and evaluate hypothesis and answer questions and just tell a data story. Um, and then we come to design. So design covers things like uh, knowing how to lay out a dashboard, knowing which fonts to use, colors, and just the general like, user design experience. And then obviously the tools. So the tools will be something like Tableau or even Power BI or Excel um, that may cover code as well. So maybe SQL, you might need to use some code to, to get at your data. Um, but tools could also be pen and paper. Uh, there's some famous uh, data visualization lady called Mona Chalabi where all of her work is done on pen and paper. So she, that is her tool. Uh, so it doesn't mean to say that you, you know, to be good at data visualization, you don't need to know a tool per se. But I think you need to, uh, a general kind of knowledge of uh, these areas and their general skill level. When I started out, I probably knew a little bit about data, more about the tool, but I had like no design like knowledge or skills. And you could probably see that from my earlier work. So I just want you to bear these things in mind um, as I'm talking through. Okay, so in terms of the tips then, uh, number one would be to master the basics. So I highly encourage you if you're just starting out or maybe you've been using Tableau for some time, uh, just go back and you know, make sure that you understand the basics of how Tableau works. Um, it's, there's no need for you to spend money on training or anything like that. I, I'm a big advocate of, of utilizing free resources if you can. Um, so that most of the resources I list on this, on this slide are free. Uh, but a good starting point for Tableau training is on the Tableau website. They offer some training videos that they're all bite-sized. They're probably about four or five minutes long each. And they uh, drill into like a specific um, thing in Tableau, whether it be calculations or mapping or something like that. Um, at the moment as well, you can actually access the e-learning uh, provided by Tableau for free. So if you sign up before June the 30th, you can actually get the e-learning free for 90 days. And the link to that is on the screen here. So even if you sign up on the 30th of June, you'll still get 90 days free. And the e-learning is great because it covers different um, skills profiles and different kind of role levels for Tableau. So not only does it cover like, the skills you need to be a Tableau creator or a Tableau viewer, it also covers uh, Tableau blueprint and Tableau skills uh, in, uh, for the server, and as well as just if you want to be an advocate of the tool in your organization. So I highly recommend uh, checking that out. Uh, the Tableau student guide is a guide put together by Maria Brock. and uh, It's not just aimed at students, but it's aimed at people that are trying to learn Tableau for the first time. And it has some really useful resources in it. So I highly recommend looking at that. If you want to upskill on just your general data skills, so maybe you want to learn Python, R, or SQL, Data Camp and Free Code Camp are both completely free sites where you can actually take courses on these tools and learn more. Uh, so they're a really good resource to check out as well. Everyone has like a different way of learning. Some people prefer like self-study, some people prefer attending a class. Obviously it's a little bit different at the moment because of the whole COVID-19 situation. Um, but there are some classes you can attend online or actually sign up to a formal course. Uh, there's courses on sites like Udemy or LinkedIn Learning um, or Coursera, places like that where you can actually, for a small amount of money, actually sign up to a, a formal course. And you may find that some training courses are run via your local user groups as well. So maybe through Charlotte Tug or through your local user group. Um, I quite often see some user groups running like deep dive sessions or some form of training. Um, and while I'm on the basics, I just want to say it's quite important that you know like data visualization best practices as well and um, i think that's really vital if you want to be good at this then you learn those and that i guess that's kind of outside of tableau a little bit but it's, it's definitely relevant um, a good site for that is the storytelling with data community and that's run by cole nisbama naflik who's the author of the book storytelling with data and um, there's a whole community on there where you can go and talk to other people you can get feedback on your work um, and there's challenges that you can help you practice as well so it's a really good site to check out Okay, so moving on to number two, it's practice. So you're only going to get good if you practice. I think the trainings will only go so far, you really need some hands on experience uh, in Tableau to be good at it. Uh, you can start off by downloading the Tableau public app for free if you don't have access to Tableau at home. Um, and then I'd say you need to pick some learning projects. Now I'd say I'd pick a combination of projects. So pick some small projects, maybe quick visits you can do in an hour or two um, and make of a Monday is a good project uh, to help you do that. But also pick some larger projects as well. So maybe some passion projects um, that involve you actually going to collect data of your own and visualizing it. So doing the whole pipeline. Um, that could be data on things like your favorite band, your favorite TV show, 
maybe even like your own data so maybe a fit, fitbit data or strava data or something like that and um, something that you're interested in and you want to learn more about and by doing that you'll actually learn more about how to source data how to scrape it how to clean it as well as how to visualize it so it's really good i think if you have a combination of those projects um, to work on I've listed some community projects on the screen here. Um, these are all like run by the Tableau community. So there's Make of a Monday, which I've mentioned already. Um, the whole essence of Make of a Monday is you, uh, it's, you take a visualization, which is found by the leaders, which usually isn't so good, hence the makeover part. Uh, and they provide the data that goes with that visualization. And the idea is that you produce something better um, and that's done every week. I've got an example on the next slide of how this works. So the visualization on the left is the, the initial visualization they found online. Uh, they source the data behind it. And then the visualizations on the right are what the community produced with the same data. So the idea is you show it in, in a better way. Um, and this runs every week and there's feedback that you can get with this. Um, so you can really learn a lot. Or even just looking at the other entries and seeing what people do is a really good learning experience. And then going back to the other projects, there's Workout Wednesday, which is almost the opposite of Make of a Monday. So you start out with a completed visualization in Tableau. And the idea is, is you work out how it was built without looking like under the hood. Uh, so you, um, you do what you can to kind of get to the final result. And if you, if, you, if you can't figure it out, then the leaders always post solution videos. So you can learn like some really advanced like, calculation techniques or presentation techniques uh, through participating in that project. And it's definitely a good challenge every week if, if that's your kind of thing. Then there's IronQuest, which is the project that I founded. So IronQuest is based upon the feeders for Iron Biz. So every month we visualize a different topic. Uh, topics we've done recently have been um, on like quantified self data, uh, looking at maps, looking at sea creatures, looking at crime. I mean, every month is a completely different topic and they're, they're always really broad. So if you're looking for a longer project to do, Iron Quest would be a good choice. And um, there's Project Health Viz, which is run by a lady called Lindsay Betzendahl. And um, this is uh, similar to the, the other monthly projects, but it's, there's a focus on health data. So every month you'll publish a health data set and you have a whole month to go away and visualize that. And then there's Sports Viz Sunday. So if you're into sports, um, I think it does what it says on the tin. So essentially every month um, they'll publish a sports data set, a different sport every month. And the idea is you go away and visualize that. But also if you're visualizing data about sports anyway, and if you share that visualization with the hashtag sports with Sunday, they will actually share your viz in a weekly um, like roundup of all the visits that have been submitted that week. So you don't need to use the data set that they provide. Um, but these are always, these are all good options, you know, to help you get started and give you something to actually work on outside of work in Tableau. So number three is to ask the right questions of your data. Uh, and what I mean by this is that I think we all need to like, interrogate our data a little bit better and we need to know uh, the questions to ask to make sure that the data is, is right. Um, and that's things like, is my data source trustworthy? Is my data complete? And also that can this data actually help me answer my question or do I need additional data? And the more you do this, the more you'll, you'll learn how to answer these questions. But I think they're all really important if we want to be good data analysts. Uh, and essentially, we need to understand the limits of your data. Um, and I'll give you an example, like quite often in data visualization, what we'll do is we'll visualize data, but we need to bring in comparison points to actually give it some kind of story to, and, and, and insight to go with it. So if you're looking at data for a particular country, you might need to know the population of that country. So that might be a complementary data set you bring in to add value to your visualization. And I think only once you start doing this do you understand these questions a little bit more and how to answer them. Um, it's important to understand like where you could slip up as well. So I've included two books at the bottom. So How Charts Lie by Alberto Cairo and Avoiding Data Pitfalls by Ben Jones. Both really good resources um, which point out things that you shouldn't do um, and just give you some tips um, to use along the way. So definitely check those out. Okay, so number four is study design fundamentals. And this is essentially on that, if you think of that triangle again, it's just purely focused on the design element. I think as, as data visualizers, it's important that we know some good design um, fundamentals. Uh, what's, it's important to note that traditional design teaching, so things that you might come across in web design or graphic design, don't always apply to data viz. And um, so you, you may be study graphic design and it, 
you know, it's, those skills aren't directly transferable across to data viz all the time. There's a specific skill required, I think, for actually presenting data and presenting it well. Um, I've included some resources on the screen um, to help you with that. So there's a book called The Design of Everyday Things by Don Norman, which talks us around good design and what good design looks like. It's a really good book. Um, Practical Typography is a free ebook from Matthew Butternick, which uh, gives you some good theory behind, behind typography and which fonts to use and that kind of thing. The Big Book of Dashboards is a book by Steve Rexler, Jeff Schaefer and Andy Cockgreave. It is essentially a big book of dashboards. I think there's about 28 dashboards in the book, um, but it's a good source of inspiration if you're building a lot of business dashboards at work. I, I constantly refer back to it if I'm looking at um, different types of dashboards or ideas I want to apply in my work. Um, but they also provide some uh, tips and tricks in there around how to present data effectively. Storytelling with Data by Colonus Mamanapolik. It's probably my favorite book about data visualization and it's tool agnostic, but it just tells you how to present data well and actually tell a story with data, which I think is really important. And finally, there's a blog by Sam Parsons called Reflections in Design. So Sam is a Tableau user and he's, um, but he's got a background in graphic design and he started a blog just to talk around design and how we can apply those design principles to data viz. Um, so it's definitely worth checking that out too. Number five is publish your work. So it's all well and good doing these things, but please, please, please don't do them in private. Share your work. Uh, you'll get so much more value out of it if you actually share it with, other, with others. Um, thankfully, Tableau makes that nice and easy, so you can share your work on Tableau Public for free um, and actually build out a portfolio of work on there. As I mentioned, I've got around 150 visits on there, so it's, I use that as my point of kind of contact. If people say, oh, let me, let me see what kind of work you're doing in Tableau, I can just point them to my page. Um, as well as publishing to Tableau Public, it's always good to share on social media as well. So it gets, your work will get more visibility. Uh, you'll find that the Tableau community kind of lives on Twitter. That you really need to be part of Twitter to engage with that community. Um, so it's always good to share your work on there. Um, but then I see people sharing their work on LinkedIn, on, on Instagram and Pinterest even. Um, it's just up to you. But I'd say Twitter is where you're going to get the most engagement if you're doing Tableau related work. Um, it's always good to seek feedback and iterate as well um, on that feedback. Uh, a good way of doing this is if you're participating in Makeover Monday, they offer a feedback service. So if you submit your visualization uh, before Wednesday, they have a call uh, late in the day on Wednesday where they actually go through all those visualizations that were submitted for feedback and provide feedback so you can act on that. Uh, but if you don't want to do that, then by all means, publish your work, share it on social media, and just put a note in the post to say that you'd welcome feedback. And I guarantee people will come to you and, and offer you really, really helpful feedback. Uh, when I was starting out, that was really, really helpful for me. I was getting feedback from people that were much more um, skilled in this area. And it, I mean, it was really invaluable. Um, and I think with that, it's important that you show progression. So you need to show that you're getting better, regardless of where you are on this process. Um, like I showed you before, I've got my first viz on my profile still, but then I've got my more recent work, which is obviously completely different. But it, it shows I've put in the effort to kind of try and better my skills. And I think that's really important, uh, particularly if you're looking for a job, to show that you're actually improving and how your skills are growing. And then talking of jobs, if, you, um, if you're looking for a job in this field, it's always good to have a visual CV. And what I mean by that is something like this, where you actually visualize your CV in Tableau and show your career history, your education, and the achievements. This is a really uh, funky design by Alex Jones, I'm showing you now. Um, and then there's a more uh, formal one here by Maria Brock. Um, but in both cases, what they've done is actually just visualize their achievements and given them timelines around when they've done certain things or when they've done certain roles. And you can actually share this along with your traditional CV and it really just show that you've you know, put the effort into to actually apply your skills in a relevant way. Number six is engage with the community. So I've touched on this already, but Tableau has this huge community behind it and you'll get so much more value out of it if you actually engage with that broader community. Um, so if you're on this call today, I'm assuming you know what a user group is. Um, but if you don't, uh, you can always go in on the website usergroups.tableau.com and on there you can just type in where you live and they'll tell you your closest user group. At the moment, most user groups are, have gone virtual because of the circumstances, um, which actually presents quite a good opportunity because it means you can attend user groups all around the world um, and get some really good content that way. 
A good way to engage with the community is to follow other people on Tableau Public, see what other people are doing, and maybe even download their workbooks and reverse engineer, because that's always a good way to learn. Um, but you'll meet a lot of people that way. Uh, obviously join Twitter, I've mentioned this before, and, and but actually start following people that work in Tableau or with Tableau. If you don't know where to begin, a good way of starting is just search the hashtag datafam and you'll probably find some Tableau people straight away and just you can start following them and you'll quickly build up a good uh, follower base. Um, another good way of engaging with the community is via the Data Visualization Society. So the Data Visualization Society live on Slack. Um, you can sign up using the link that I've embedded in this workbook. Um, but what they do is they offer some slightly different to Tableau, but it's tool agnostic uh, and just general uh, conversations around data visualization sorry data visualization um, you can there's career advice on there they have in-depth discussions about different topics in the industry there's local groups where you can connect with other people there's industry groups where you can talk with people in the, in the same industry as you there's just generally a lot of conversations going on on there so it's a really good resource to check out um, it's always good to find a mentor I think um, mentoring is can be really really powerful and if you're looking to do that and you don't really know where to begin there's a website that was created by Mark Bradburn who now works for Tableau uh, called mentoringmeetup.com and you can go on there you can put your details in and actually find people that are willing to mentor you you can reach out to them generally speaking there'll be like Tableau Zen masters or ambassadors or people that are more experienced in Tableau um, but it can be really really helpful to actually do that and, and find a mentor um, so that's a good way to, to go about that. And then I've mentioned this before, but the Storytelling with Data community is a great place to go and engage with others, have conversations, um, and actually you can go on there and actually seek feedback on your work as well, or even give feedback to others. Just as an example of how powerful Tableau is, this is a result of a, a question that was posed by Maria Brock. So she went on to Twitter and she asked people how she could learn SQL. And these are all the responses that she got back. So Twitter can be really, really powerful. So if you've got a question about Tableau or data and you go on to Tableau and post it, people are really, really willing to help you um, and they will come back uh, in their thousands, like just answering your question and you know, trying to help you and pointing you to good resources. So it's, it is really good to have that, that platform. Okay, number seven is get certified. So, I mean, I, I spoke at the beginning how I've got certifications in Tableau and I think it's a really, really good thing to have. Um, I actually waited about four years after I started using the tool before taking my first Tableau exam. I don't recommend you do that. Um, I, I was kept putting it off because I was convinced myself that I was going to fail. I didn't, thankfully. Um, but I think it's, certifications in Tableau are really, really powerful. Again, they can boost your CV. They'll help you stand out from the crowd if you're applying for a job. Um, and they're also a really good way of just testing your knowledge. Um, when I sat my exam, I had to do a lot of revision in advance. And I found out there were things in Tableau that I just didn't know about, that I've never used. And um, so certification can be a really good way to fill in those gaps. And the added bonus of certification is uh, you actually get badges and virtual badges sometimes to send you stickers. But also at Tableau Conference, you can get T-shirts and badges, like physical badges there. So you always get these freebies that come with certification. Um, there's just in case you're wondering, uh, there's three levels of certification for Tableau Desktop. So the the like first level is specialist, uh, which is a relatively new exam. It's just one hour long, 30 multiple choice questions, and it's valid forever, which is great. Um, it normally costs $100, but it's currently discounted by 50%, and that's valid until the end of the month, so end of 30th of June. Um, so it's definitely worth checking that out. It's nice that it doesn't ever expire, so um, you can have it on your portfolio forever. Um, and then the next level is the associate exam, but just bear in mind, you don't need to do the specialist before you do the associate, so you can go straight in at associate level if you wish. That's two hours long, 36 multiple choice questions, costs $250 and it's valid for two years. Um, in terms of the multi-choice questions, the questions are a combination of just um, like pick the right answer out of four, um, or you have to actually go into Tableau and do something hands-on. So it might be a question like, uh, what was the profit in South Carolina in December? And you have to actually use Tableau to get at that answer. Um, but you don't submit any workbooks or anything like that. Uh, the highest level is the professional exam, which is three hours long. Um, it's practical, so you actually are doing things in Tableau. You're building charts, you're building dashboards, and you actually submit your workbook at the end to be marked. Um, so I think with that exam, there's more of a focus on data-based best practices. Um, 
so it's really important that you understand like the way you should present data and that kind of thing that costs six hundred dollars um, and it's valid for three years and you can't do the professional exam before you've done the soc either number eight is to leverage community resources so I've mentioned a couple of times that the community are just a very active group of people. Um, lots of people in the community will have blogs, video channels, podcasts, uh, you name it, people are doing it. Um, I could talk about this topic all day, uh, but I won't. <laughs> um, but here are some of the, my favourite resources from the community. So these are all blogs, um, but it's well worth checking these out. So you've got Andy Kriebel's blog. He's probably the most famous kind of Tableau Zen Master or Hall of Fame Zen Master that there is. Um, his blog is an amazing resource. It, it was where I learned Tableau. Um, he's been blogging for a number of years. He now has over a thousand blog posts on pretty much every topic in Tableau you can imagine. So definitely check out his website. Um, it's Playfair Data by Ryan Sleeper. Um, which again, loads of Tableau tutorials on there. And he also has a paid service as well where you can get access to more videos and training resources. Uh, the Fleurledge twins, uh, so Kevin and Ken Fleurledge have a fantastic site, lots of Tableau tutorials and also templates to help you build more advanced chart types. So perhaps you want to build things like Sankey charts, they have templates for that kind of thing. Uh, Data, Revelation, Data Revelations is uh, by Steve Rexler. It's really good if you're working with survey data. So he has lots of tips and tricks uh, for people that are using survey data. And then finally, Tableau Tim. So the tab Tim does loads of videos on YouTube and he's really good at um, putting videos out for new Tableau features. So every time Tableau has a new version, uh, Tim will post a video on there and they're all really well produced. So definitely check out his channel. Okay, number nine is teach others. So it's really important that we don't just take from the community, but also give back. And I think you'll learn a lot if you try and teach somebody Tableau. Um, you'll, you'll quickly find when you try and teach somebody something, if you understand it fully or not, and you can, if you can explain a, a technique. Um, a good way of doing this is um, you could start your own blog or video channel. It's really actually easy to start a blog these days. You could start a blog on Medium. Um, you could even maybe do a guest post on someone else's blog. Or if you don't want to write, just set up a, a video channel on YouTube and just record yourself um, using Tableau and talking through what you're doing. And um, you could mentor someone, maybe in the community or at work. Uh, you could present at a user group or a meetup. Um, I'm sure the guys that run Charlotte Tug wouldn't mind you having you as a speaker. Tugs always need speakers. So if you want to go and teach uh, people that way, that's a really good way to do it. Maybe you could present on a new feature or something you've done in Tableau. Um, you could answer questions on the forums. So Tableau have a really good forum where you can go and ask questions and get people to answer them. It's always good if you go on there and just see what questions people are asking and kind of challenge yourself to answer them. Uh, that can be a really good way to learn. And finally, if you're at work, maybe you could set up a Tableau doctor practice or even run a lunch and learn session. Because uh, people always want to learn and if you're willing to do this stuff for free, people will turn up and it's a really good way to practice your presentation skills and also practice your teaching skills as well. Okay, so just to recap, so I appreciate we've covered quite a lot. So I'd say if you want to be a good data analyst and be good at Tableau, master the basics, so build those foundations, practice regularly, um, choose projects that inspire you and will challenge you, ask the right questions of your data, study design fundamentals, so know which colors to use, how to lay out properly, which typography to use, publish your work, and share your work and get that feedback, engage with the community and build out your network, get certified, improve your skills, leverage community resources and teach others and give back. Thank you for listening to my talk today. Um, as I mentioned before, you can reach out to me on Twitter, my blog, my email, or you can check out my Tableau public profile there. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for joining us. Uh, great to have you. Folks, if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A. Um, Sarah, for you, the Chick-fil-A gift card will be in the mail. It's useless to me, Jeremy. We haven't got Chick-fil-A <laughs> here. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you have questions, go ahead and put them in the Q&A or the chat. We'd love to uh, have her answer them. Uh, we'll give you guys a few minutes to type those in, and then we'll jump in to the last segment we have for you today where we're going to highlight some additional resources uh, from around the Tableau web. Um, okay, so we've got one. Sarah, what's the most common data viz mistake you've seen? Well, there's quite a few. Um, I'd say quite often people don't add a title to their to their work. Um, so it's, you'll be surprised the number of people that publish visualizations and they're just a few charts. And it doesn't actually say what it's about. 
Um, so always remember to add a title and explain what your visualization is about because yeah. I mean it massively increases the chances of people reading it and understanding it. Yeah, context is key. Uh, if, <laughs> if a user doesn't understand what you're trying to say, they're not going to stick around long. True. Um, We've got another, will you share the presentation uh, for, for folks out there? We, we record them, we put them on our YouTube channel, and I believe Sarah is also willing to share the PowerPoint itself. Yeah, there's quite a lot of links in there. So yeah, definitely I'll share that with you, Jeremy. You can share yeah. it out. We got one more question. Um, how did you become a Tableau Zen master? Um, that's from Melinda. <laughs> <laughs> um, good question. So I think I do a lot in the community. I'm really active. Um, I've done a lot of, of all different things. I set up Iron Quest. Um, which is, you know, and I was giving people feedback for that. So it's just incredibly active. Um, I didn't become a Zen master overnight. Like I've been doing this for like five years now. Um, so yeah, just a lot of hard work. All righty. Any other questions while we've got Sarah? All right. If, uh, if, mm -hmm. if you pop a question in, we'll, we'll, we'll call her back if we need to. Uh, <laughs> that I'll uh, turn it over to Rashid and William to give you kind of some highlights. Uh, we wanted to introduce a new segment here, highlighting some resources we found, some other user groups in this instance, uh, where, where you'll gain some additional value from the content available through you. So go ahead, guys. Okay, um, let me know, Jeremy, when you can see the screen. Just wanna make sure I got gotcha. you can see. Okay, um, what I really want to cover real quick is, um, to Sarah's point, there's a lot going on right now in the, the virtual Tableau community. And I just want to reaffirm a few things that if you're not aware of this, the virtual Tableau community events URL under usergroups.tableau.com, this is where you can go to find out about all future Tableau user group events, no matter where they are whether they're here in America, whether they're overseas. Um, it's just a plethora of just unbelievably great content coming up. So I would just bookmark this page for as long as the, the COVID situation is going on and we're virtual. It's just all of these upcoming meetings, they're available to you in all of these different time slots and it's some really great content. And to stick with that, if, it, if you ever miss anything, Tableau is automatically recording all of their, their virtual events and posting them to their YouTube page. So as you can see, there is literally a user group meeting, I'd say two or three times a week. And there's just, again, a plethora of tremendous information. Some user group meetings are an hour, some of them are three hours. I'm realistic. I can't tell you that you should watch every single one of these, these meetings, even though if you could, you should, because you probably would get something out of all of them. So what we try to do here, and for those of us who are new at the Charlotte, you know, Tableau user group, um, this is actually our page, uh, usergroups.tableau.com backslash Charlotte. If you ever want any content that we produce, anything that we were involved in, any of our contact information, we have it all centralized here in this one location. But what we also want to do is call out our counterparts for doing some phenomenal stuff you know, in their user groups. So what we did this month and starting this month and going forward, we've created our own best of VTUG page, where in which we'll watch some of this stuff for you and call out things that even we were like, yeah, this was phenomenal. I'm so glad I watched this. Someone else should watch this too. Uh, and I've, I've done that with these about six or seven of them just over the past few weeks. And again, these are user group meetings from our counterparts where I'm telling you as a, a user group leader, I walked away learning something. Um, these are all instances where someone's showing you literally how to do something in Tableau that may not be something you would have known, you know, a week ago. And they're very good. Um, and we'll try to keep this as up to date as possible with just anytime we find any user group meeting where a, a valuable piece of information, yeah, I can tell at the Austin Tableau user group just last week, um, I forget his name, uh, Greg Rossi showed literally how to connect Tableau to Google Finance via the API and do a live connection to Google Sheets. I had never done that before and that was pretty cool. And even I was like, wow, I'm, someone else would find this useful. So again, we're, we're gonna try to keep this as up to date as possible. I encourage you to watch as many user group meetings as you can, but if you can't, we will try our best to kind of call out the ones that we found value in. And we would ask you to help us do the same. If you go to a user group meeting and you find some content that you found useful, let us know. And we'll post it here too as well, um, just so that everybody can kind of get that same experience. Because um, again, there's a lot of content that's being produced right now and it's so valuable and it's so much, it can be overwhelming, but I can't stress this enough. It's still worth the time to invest if you have it. 
Um, another thing we also did is that we created another um, section within our, our Charlotte page for just what we're calling Tableau Shorts. Um, anytime Tableau itself produces a video that, again, all of these videos are between two to four minutes long. So these are all extremely short. Uh, and they're just useful kind of when to use a relationship versus a join. How are relationships different from joins? Anything that Tableau might have produced, how to create dynamic titles, you know, that change based on the filter selections. These are all things that Tableau themselves has actually produced. And again, it's just good content, good information, just good stuff. So we, we're trying to centralize this stuff so you don't have to bookmark 50 million links. But again, I encourage you, if you have any content that you've produced, if you know anyone that's produced something, if you found anything that's valuable, let us know. We're going to try to centralize as much of this stuff as we can to kind of give you a one stop shop for virtually all this information. And as always, our landing page where we keep links for everything that we produce, whether it's uh, our community forum, our YouTube channel, whatever, it always can be found at this URL, usergroups.tableau.com backslash Charlotte. Uh, and with that, I want to uh, let William talk a little bit about the e-learning package that is available right now and just the, the overall value and importance of it. So William, I'll kind of let you speak on that. Excellent. Thanks. Thanks, Rajiv. Uh, before I talk about that, I wanted to uh, say how delighted, Sarah, I was to see your reference to the design of everyday things. That was a textbook we used uh, when I was going through school. And uh, it's, a, it's a great reference. It's a great overall. Originally, the book was titled The Psychology of Everyday Things. And it, it goes into uh, just a, a, ton of, a, a ton of great things to keep in mind when you're designing. My, my favorite anecdote from that book, either from the book or from the class, was at one point in time, uh, vacuum cleaner manufacturers would intentionally make their vacuum cleaners louder because the consumers of vacuum cleaner cleaners held the belief that a loud vacuum cleaner meant a more effective vacuum cleaner. So just making it loud was a design element, was a feature of vacuum cleaners. And that's the kind of stuff you find in the book. Really, a really great text. Um, also, you know, resonating what, what Sarah said about certifications. I've recently been receiving a lot of encouragement from my business partner to get these Tableau certifications. And uh, I've been doing chart making analytics for 25 years. I've been using Tableau for about six years. And I think I, I, I've run the risk of becoming rusty at Tableau. And that's been, that's been uh, the thing that's caused me to hesitate taking these certifications. And just this week, I went into this e-learning site signed up for the free 90 day course and I've uh, gone through a couple of badges and gone through some of the lessons. And the really, the really powerful thing, even for an experienced practitioner is uh, for, me, for me personally, it's uh, learning the phrases and the language that Tableau uses. So as I was taking one of the assessments, um, I came across the phrase negative correlation. And the, the question was, you know, what does this mean? And, you know, I've had too many statistics classes and too many technical classes, you know, it can be interpreted a couple of different ways. Uh, inversely proportional, directly proportional, no correlation, uh, that kind of thing. But the important thing about these uh, e-learning classes is that you're going to learn the phrasing that Tableau uses. So how, how does Tableau mean that phrase negative correlation? Uh, another one that I came across in one of the lessons was the phrase combined axis chart. So I, I'd actually never heard this phrase before, combined axis chart. But when I went through the lesson, it's like, oh, well, I've just always colloquially called that a measure names, measure values chart. But Tableau actually, they've developed these courses, these quick, you know, three to five minute uh, lessons to help you not only learn, learn the thing, but to learn the language as well. And that's, I'm, my confidence is getting higher that in the next 90 days, I'll be able to go through these courses, learn the language that Tableau uses, also refresh any skills, and then hopefully within the next couple of months get these certifications. So for this month, Tableau e-learning is my favorite thing in the Tableau universe. Thanks, uh, that's, uh, that's what I wanted to share this time. Uh, Rashid, Jeremy, anything else you wanna add? Uh, no, real quick, um, just as everybody's on the call already had said, um, the e-learning package does expire this month. The free e-learning, I should say. It expires on June 30th, 2020. Um, so if you sign up today, you get access for free for the next 90 days. So if you signed up on June 30th, you would have free access up till uh, September 30th. But if you sign up on July 31st, it's no longer free. 
Uh, so the key is if you want to take advantage, please take advantage in the next 11 days, um, because after that, it goes back to its normal pricing structure. Take advantage of, uh, I've recommended it to everyone uh, on my team at work who's looking to upscale or get a little bit deeper into Tableau. Uh, my wife has even signed up to take it. Um, she's a middle school teacher, so she's uh, she, she just got started the other day. It's a great resource. Take advantage. Even if you're not going to start right away, go ahead and sign up. Get it. Get in the door, and you can circle back in July if you need to. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, again, thank you, Sarah. Uh, thank you to everyone who attended today. It's great to have you. It's uh, great to have this forum, even when we can't meet in, in person. Um, we look forward to the day when we can do that again. Um, but again, thank you to everyone who took some time out of your day um, and had lunch with us. <laughs> thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, Rashid. Um, it's been really good to talk to you. I will, I'm not eating my lunch. It's, it's like nearly 6 p.m. here. But um, <laughs> I'm about to join this event, <laughs> which I'm co-leading. Um, <laughs> so we have the Data Farm Community Jam uh, in starting at two o'clock Eastern, I think. Yep. Um, yeah, and we've got four talks on um, Tableau prep, um, Tableau like functions, uh, certifications, and Sports Biz Sunday as well. Oh, great. Yeah, folks, uh, prep would probably be a great topic for, for some of the folks in the, in the group um, and other Tableau products. So if you have the time this afternoon, this, this, this would be another great talk to listen in on. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. Uh, we'll close it out there. Have a great rest of your day. Great weekend. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Thank you. You guys have a good one. Thanks.